So before we jump into this empties video, I just wanted to thank those of you who watched my summertime's favorite video and wrote such a lovely and supportive comments under that video. Um, it just means a whole lot to me. And I know that at the beginning of that video, I definitely was showing my um, just sadness over what happened here in Portland regarding those train attacks from several weeks ago. And just thank you so much to um, everybody who showed me such um, warmth and love. And I just appreciate you guys so much. So let's go ahead and get started here on these empties. As usual, I'm gonna try not to delve too much into the ingredients on a few of them. I do have some notes here regarding ingredients because um, there are some that just, you know, demand to be talked about because the ingredients are so lovely and I just can't help but talk about them. I did do a quick little um, sort of scan of the staples that I went through and I'm going to post that on Instagram just because I don't like to just keep talking over and over again about the same products, but I want you guys to see what I did finish up so that you can see what I use on a regular basis. I did finish this, um, this the company is called Reverie, but the product is called the Nude Shampoo. I did finish this up. I really, really do like this product a lot, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using this on a regular basis. It is quite expensive, and I don't know if I like it any better than other shampoos that I do use already. I like the Flora Shampoo better. I know there's some kind of, I don't know, genuine scandals, pseudo scandals, I don't know, around the Honest Beauty line, but I do really like their shampoo and conditioner and it is cheaper than this one. And it's really similar actually to this one. So anyway, I probably am not gonna be using this on any kind of regular basis, but if you are curious about it, I think it's worth maybe smelling if you're at Sephora and you're able to you know give this a try get a sample of it smell it if you think you might like the um the fragrance of it but I probably won't be using this another sort of uh you know bath time product that I absolutely have fallen in love with and have repurchased is I don't know if it's MOA or MOA uh they're green bath potion and this is what the packaging looks like or the the box or cylinder that it comes in and then you open it up like this and the bottle i really really love this beautiful green glass bottle so like i said this is their fortifying green bath potion and the scent in here is peppermint and fennel and you do have to love peppermint and fennel because it is overwhelmingly fennel. I would say it's more strongly fennel actually than peppermint, which at first I was pretty surprised by, but it is incredible. I actually use two capfuls in my bath. And as you guys know, I love Epsom salts. You'll see it on my empties video in on Instagram. I go through bags of that stuff and two capfuls is really, it's amazing. It fills up the whole bathroom. It, um, it's pretty potent on the skin even. It kind of gives you that vapor rub uh, sensation on your skin. And it is, I really like it. When my husband comes into the bathroom, when I'm taking a bath with it, it's, it's a little too overwhelming for him, even just the smell in the bathroom. But for me, it is just enveloping in that fennel peppermint smell and i don't know what it is about it but it's just very therapeutic for me and it's it's actually very calming i could see for some people that it might be a little bit too much but i find it to be just an incredible experience especially after I've had a really long tennis match or a hard workout or just a really long day and I just need to relax and unwind and I love it. So this is gonna become a staple of mine. The, this was actually a, uh, I think it was a Christmas gift. Yeah, this was definitely a Christmas gift from my husband. I got a few of these bottles from him and this is the Blooming Dream Lavender Love Body Oil and I mentioned these in a previous video and I love using these in the Epsom salt. So I use about 15 mils of this oil in a big bag and I just kind of swirl it around with my hands. 
So that's why I, that's how I like using these oils. And the Blooming Dream oils are just the body oils are per, like I said, they're perfect for the Epsom salts, and then creating your own bath salts but they also make beautiful body oils as well. So I do use them for both, but since I kind of have it, you know, nailed down on the amount for the Epsom salts, that's why, you know, I just really like using them for the bath salts. And they come in all different scents and they're just beautiful. And they have the coconut oil, jojoba oil, rice bran oil, abyssinian oil, red raspberry oil, camellia oil, and just beautiful essential oils. So, uh, I highly recommend checking out the Blooming Dream website if you've never checked it out before because Susan also makes beautiful all natural perfumes as well. And then I think the last body product I have here is the Strange Invisible Perfumes Body Lotion. I have the Frankincense and Coriander. Gorgeous bottle. I really love this lotion, but it is incredibly expensive. I believe this might even be upwards of $75, which is just crazy for eight fluid ounces. But admittedly, this was just a total treat to myself. I always wanted to indulge in one of their body lotions. I like the thickness of the texture and so I just went for it, but I don't think I would get it again because although the scent is very unique, I don't know as if the lotion itself is that special to warrant the price or have me ever do it again. So I'm glad that I bought it once. I don't regret purchasing it, but I don't think I would ever do it again. Let's move on to skincare. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of face mists and this Alyssum Alchemy was a beautiful experience and I would definitely purchase this again. Um, this is one that I did write down ingredients for. So the main scent of this is rose water. Just beautiful, beautiful rose scent. So if you are a rose fan, you will definitely want to check this out. But in addition to the rose, it has green tea, pomegranate CO2, and then it also has an ingredient, um, kakadu plum extract. And I don't know if I'm saying kakadu or kakadu. It's K-A-K-A-K-A-K-A-D-U plum. And that is very high in vitamin C. So you're gonna be getting some vitamin C with this face mist. And then it also has sandalwood and rosemary. So just a lovely experience. And then it also has a rose quartz. Um, I don't think there's an actual rose quartz stone in here. I believe it's rose quartz infusion. Just a beautiful, beautiful product. And the woman behind Alyssum Alchemy is also really wonderful. I highly recommend uh, following her on Instagram if you don't already. And then another product that you guys have heard me talk about is the Laurel Winter Elixir. This was limited edition, but Laurel will be producing another one for this upcoming winter. So if you didn't get this one, I highly recommend buying the one that she's going to be producing for the upcoming winter months. So I'm definitely going to be getting that because I loved this so, so much. Um, another face product that is a part of my routine that I adore and I have already purchased another one and I'm using my new bottle already is the Siam C's Be Calm Facial Serum, or the I have Be Calm Twilight Serum, so this is for nighttime use. Although you could use this during the day, I believe, if you really wanted to. I don't see why you couldn't. And the first ingredient of this is the black cumin seed oil. And I have become a huge fan of black cumin seed oil. It's really similar to rosehip seed oil as, um, in terms of the profile of the linoleic acid and the oleic acid. So in rosehip um, rose hip seed oil, and I just looked this up, rosehip seed oil, the percentage of linoleic acid is 44% in rosehip seed oil, and in the black cumin, it's 55% and then oleic acid in rosehip is 14%, and in this one, it's 22%. So similar profile in that the linoleic 
um, is more of that drier oil and the oleic acid is what makes it a heavier oil. So similar to rosehip, this is a gonna be a drier oil with the black cumin seed. Um, but as you can tell by the percentages, this is actually um, higher in the fatty acids. So black cumin seed oil is a wonderful, wonderful oil, especially if you maybe are acne prone. And then the second ingredient is the pulverized aloe filet, which is, I would say, is kind of um, one of Siamse's signature ingredients. So I'm not, that's as much as I'm gonna talk about in terms of ingredients in here, but with those two ingredients, you kind of, you have that combination of the moisturizer with the oil and then the hydration from the aloe. So it's just a beautiful blend of the hydration and the moisturizer. And I just can't talk enough about this. I just, I love it. I love this scent. It's kind of got a really healing medicinal uh, scent profile. I love it. I've already purchased another bottle this of it. This product was first introduced to me by the Boxwalla, by Lavanya, and I'm so grateful for that because I love Siamses. Moving on to a mask, I completed my Leilani or Leilani Melly Glow mask. And this is a honey based mask. Smells wonderful, smells like fruit and honey, which is those really are the main ingredients. So it's raw honey from Hawaii. It's got strawberry, guava, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid. This is definitely something I would purchase again. Although, believe it or not, I think I'm probably the only person in the green beauty world who has not tried the mermaid mask. So I think if I were to place another order with Leilani, I would probably get the mermaid mask. I actually do have another face product to talk about. And I'm not gonna talk too much about this because this is going to be part of my vitamin C uh, serum video that I am working on. But this is the Primavera Vitamin C Serum from Mala Apothecary. So you're gonna hear me talk a lot more about this line and this product in particular, but I completed the little sample. And, and actually it is little, but I got a lot of use out of this because you really don't need very much because a little goes a long way. But if you wanna see what the full size looks like, just go to my Instagram feed um, because I did a recent post of what the full size looks like. But what I will tell you is I love this serum. I love the texture of it. It's aloe based. And actually this too also has the cockadoo plum extract in it, the same thing that the Alyssum Alchemy Rose Mist has in it. So very high in vitamin C, beautiful formulation, beautiful texture. I love using it. So that's what I will say about this, but this is empty and I'm thrilled to have the full size and that's all I'm gonna say about it. Let's talk a little bit more about sort of like specialized treatment things. So these are the Honest Hazel Under Eye mask things and I thought these worked okay. The one thing I didn't like about it is they just, they really slide down your face. So you have to, first of all, you have to be lying down in order to use them, which I wasn't super crazy about because I, I wanna be able to move around the house and take care of things, you know, maybe do the dishes, make the kids lunches, do something like that while I'm using these. So that was sort of a downside for me on this. And I, you know, I'm just not too sure if it worked as well as just what I usually do with the, um, with the Kahina eye serum. And I put a lot under my eyes and let it sit there for a good 20 minutes, you know, as long as I would use a mask for, I can't really say I noticed that big of a difference between doing those two methods. So I don't think I would get these Honest Hazel eye masks again. What I have gotten are the 100% um, pure under eye masks. I can't remember what they're called, but they're the green ones. And I've used those once and I wasn't walking around the house. I just lied down for that and watched a YouTube video or something. So I didn't put that to the test in terms of being upright, but I feel like those worked better than these. 
So the next thing I'm going to do, so they came in a pack of five. I gave one of them to my sister. So I have a few more of those left. So what I'm going to do is put those to the test and see if I can walk around the house and take care of, you know, just household stuff. So I'll keep you guys posted on the 100% pure eye masks. But these I wouldn't buy again, the Honest Hazel ones. I do have a couple samples of the Glossier Milky Jeller, Jeller, Milky Jelly Cleanser. And this, these weren't, and first of all, you might be asking me, why do I have these samples? And I have them because I've placed a couple of Glossier orders. And I have liked several of the things that I've gotten. So I know that everybody and their grandma has been doing Glossier videos and reviews, and I feel like I don't really know if it makes sense for me to put out my opinions or not. You guys are probably sick and tired of seeing the Glossier videos pop up on your sidebar. So if you are interested in my two cents on some of the uh, Glossier products that I've gotten, I'm more than happy to put out a video regarding my reviews. But unless there's like, you know, any serious interest, I think I'd probably skip it. So let me know if you guys would be interested. But my thoughts on the Milky Jelly Cleanser are nothing special. Um, to me, it feels like just sort of a um, amped up version of Cetaphil, really. It's like Cetaphil maybe feels a little bit more sophisticated with a little bit of a rose scent. So nothing special in my mind. I really don't understand what all the hype is about it. And in, for me, their makeup is more of the standout in their line. I'm not really impressed with their skincare. And that's probably because I've gotten so, and I'm gonna sound like a total um, green beauty snob here, but I've just gotten so spoiled by just the beautiful botanical oils and botanical scents and just that experience of that. that um, I don't know, just the Glossier line doesn't feel like anything really special to me, so. Um, all right, and then a makeup, I can't believe it, but it's pretty rare that I actually have some makeup to show, but I did get through a pan of the Jane Iredell Pure Press Base. This is pretty much toast. I mean, I could probably take a smaller brush and get around that rim there and use it as concealer, but I probably won't be doing that. So I have a brand new pan in my compact. And I love that stuff. I use it all the time. I've been using it for years and years and years and I will never stop using that stuff. And then the very last thing I have here are the Theo bars. I don't know if you saw my post a while back. These were on sale for like $1.99. So I thought I would try a couple new flavors. The, um, the one that I didn't really like very much was the Black Rice Quinoa Crunch. I wouldn't get this one again but I really did like the mint dark chocolate. This was a big hit. But I do think that the coconut will always be my favorite. I'm just a big coconut fan. So as you guys know, it's a little bit like the fits and starts thing here, but I'm gonna do my best over the summer to keep going with the videos, but we'll just see how it goes. But I always appreciate your support and Thank you so much for watching this video. And um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I hope you guys are enjoying the beginnings of your summer. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. See you soon, bye.